The agenda for this video will be to look at manufacturing work orders in NetSuite. We'll start with looking at the work order data. Uh, we'll issue materials, raw materials to the work order. We'll see how the work order can be marked as completed and then we'll proceed to close the work order. I'll start by logging into the system. I'll enter my credentials over here and log in. Here I have logged in into the manufacturing role which gives me access to the work orders, bill of materials, executions, so on and so forth. We'll first take a look at an existing work order. I'll open that in a new tab. Here the work order number is 199. It was created for a customer called Smith Incorporated. An assembly called RAK was being assembled and the quantity we plan to assemble as part of this work order was 2. Nothing has been built so far. And you can also see at the bottom you can see items that have been uh, marked to be uh, issued from the warehouse to complete this work order. We'll create a new work order for our uh, demo purpose. Over here the system asks us to put some uh, data as mandatory. I'll enter the subsidiary first since that will give me access to the list of items that are available as part of the subsidiary. I'll enter the item number that I want to assemble. Uh, as you can see automatically some data fields are being populated here. Mark sub assemblies is phantom, uh, the work order form, revision number C and the components that are part of this assembly have been automatically fetched from the item master data. I'll update the quantity to be 10. I think I have some uh, raw material that is missing for uh, the work order. That should be fine. And then I'll enter the location for which I want to manufacture this work order. I'll save this work order. As you can see the work order has been saved. The status has become released. At this point in time I can see that the raw materials have to be issued. Uh, so I have some quantities of raw materials that have been committed to be pulled from the warehouses, from the stock. Some quantity is back order. Like I said, some raw material is missing. HDW handle is missing in the raw material inventory. So out of 42, only 18 is missing and uh, this has been placed in back order. So we'll have to order this from a vendor so that we can proceed with execution of the work order completely. We can also see that the used and build is zero as of now, which means not nothing has been issued to this work order as, it, as of yet and we have not finished uh, any of the tasks that have been supposed to be completed as part of execution of this work order. To do that, we'll start by issuing components. I'll click on issue components. Here we are pulling raw materials from the uh, raw materials warehouse and issuing it to the, uh, to the order itself. So NetSuite automatically shows us the quantity that is supposed to be pulled from the warehouses. So it, this can either be fully issued so all the components that need to be issued as part of this work order can be fully issued at once or they can be issued in parts. So for our example, let's issue some quantities in parts. So this doesn't have to be in any particular uh, proportion or anything like that. Whatever can be uh, picked from the warehouses can be issued or it can be issued based on whatever quantity you need to manufacture today. So I'm just issuing a few materials so far. I'm going to save this work order issue. The work order issue has been created and now I can go back to the work order and see how that reflects in the work order. When I scroll down you can see that the quantities that have been used in the build are the quantities that have issued from the uh, warehouses in the past transaction. Now based on whatever operations the users execute on the work, uh, workshop, um, we can also enter the completion. So completion is basically telling the system that uh, we have completed manufacturing a certain number of finished goods as part of this work order. And whichever operations you have executed can be entered here. So I can enter one operation or multiple operations at the same time. So if I click only on one operation, 10 to 10. Only one operation over here becomes active, so I can enter the actual machine run time, so on and so forth. I can also enter the quantity that have been completed in terms of finished goods. So let's say if I have finished one quantity in the finished goods, 
so you can see the machine runtime and the labor runtime are being fetched from the items ma manufacturing routing settings if by chance any additional time was spent uh, working on this uh, task so if instead of 30 I spent 35 minutes working on this I can also enter that and this will be later on useful for reporting to see how many users were productive what time they used and if there are any issues on the uh, production line which is causing delays this can also be monitored uh, based on this so I can also enter multiple uh, operations for completion like I mentioned so if I complete one finished quantity of this uh, RAK product I'm supposed to be executing all these four uh, operations and these are the times that are supposed to be used up uh, uh, as far uh, as far as the operations is concerned so let's say I have entered actual times that I've taken for each of these tasks and then I can save this work order completion On saving this, we can go back to the work order and see how that reflects over there. Here you can see that the build quantity has become 1, which means out of 10 we have one manufactured 1 finished goods. Sorry about that. And then we can also see that under operations, uh, if we go here, we can see that the completed quantity has also become 1 for each of these operations. And as we discussed earlier, used and built is the quantity that you've issued from the warehouse so far for the components, for the raw materials for this work order. And thus, uh, we can proceed and complete uh, subsequent quantities that need to be manufactured in terms of finished goods. We can also enter completion with backflush. What this allows us to do is basically enter the amount of uh, finished goods that we have uh, created. And based on that, the system will automatically backflush raw material components in the proportionate quantities from the warehouses. You can also enter the operations for which I have marking as completed. So when I'm completing one finished good uh, quantity for this work order, the corresponding raw material quantities are automatically pulled from the warehouses. If I, let's say, make this two, the quantities will change based on the proportion that is required from the bomb. I can again save this work order completion. and go back to the work order to see the data here you can see the build quantity has become 3 because I marked 2 with backflush and you can also see that the used and built quantities for the components will have updated based on whatever quantities were pulled from the warehouse for 2 additional quantities that were finished in the finished goods The shop floor guys can then proceed to complete the remaining quantities that are supposed to be built as part of this work order. And once uh, the quantities have been fully built, you can close the work order. So I'm closing this work order prematurely, but ideally the work order will be closed whenever we finished manufacturing 10 out of the 10 uh, components that were planned for this work order. Right now I'm closing it only with three quantities. I'm going to save this. And you can see the transaction was saved successfully. I'll also go back to the work order and see what it looks like. As you can see, the work order status is closed. Built is 3. I, was, I had planned to make 10, but I have built 3. And you can see there is no more quantity that is committed, which means I have no, no longer to issue any raw materials to this work order since this work order is closed. And no longer do we have any back order quantity because no longer do we require any more uh, raw materials for this uh, work order to be completed. And that brings us to the end of this video. Uh, we've seen the work order creation, issue of raw materials to the work order, completion of operations, as well as closing the work order. Thanks for watching.